What's up, everybody? How you doing? It's Capes and Cows. It's Friday, and what a show we have. It's our, one of our last shows of the year, second to last, penultimate, as Mark Ellis would say. Um, we have a lot to talk about as the James Gunn drama continues. We talked about it on Big Thing a little bit yesterday, but we'll talk about it again here today. There's a lot of different things, but he's also talked not even just the drama itself, but more so about how the project is going to happen, uh, how, how the DCU slate will be announced, certain characters that will pop up. Uh, and then which characters will, which characters won't show up. We'll kind of speculate on that. Zach Levi talked about that. The Rock talked about that. Everybody's talking about that. So why don't we talk about that? And that's what we'll do today. Todd Phillips was rumored. You know that guy. He made a, almost a billion dollars or a billion dollars with the Joker. I think I made a billion dollars. Either way, um, they apparently he was the one that was rumored to run DC, and he turned it down. We'll see how true that report is. Diego Luna, you hear that guy? Well, he was, uh, he was rumored to, to play... Reed Richards. Some schmuck asked him whether or not that's true or not. And we'll talk about his response in a moment. Um, the Boom Studio segment, that'll be back. We got some other Spider Man 4. Is it ever going to happen? Well, we'll find out. There's so much, so much and more on Capes and Cows today. But before we even get into all the other stories that we're going to talk about, please, patreon.com slash the big thing show. I'm adding something new that I'll be doing uh, in January. And it's essentially the one-on-one -on -one interviews that I've done. I'm going to add five spots, half an hour spots, where I'm essentially going to do a one-on-one -on -one interview with the people who sign up, ask them about their lives, ask them about their them in general, and then they'll get the footage. So if you're interested in that, but there's some other stuff. We do the rewatches. We do the uh, Q&As. We do special reviews. A bunch of stuff over there. So come join us. Podcast, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere podcasts are found. Make sure you head on over there. And speaking of heading on over, head on over. It's almost Christmas time. Do you guys please tell me you got a Capes and Cows shirt? You got a Capes and Cows mug? You're going to see Koi drinking some trade coffee out of a Capes and Cows mug in just a little bit. Moments here. away. Moments away from that. So make sure you do that. Um, we're excited to get into it here, guys. I missed it last week. You guys crushed it. So let's get into it. It's Capes and Cows. It's me. It's you. It's Winston. It's Koi. It's all of us. See you in a sec. All right, everybody, capes and cows. I'm excited to have you all back. And Koi Jandro is here. And Winston A. Marshall. Guys, we are back. And I have to say, what a great show you guys put on last Thanks, week. Thank man. you guys so much. Almost at 20,000 views on that episode. Crushing Zoom, it. Wow. No less. Like, Doing not, well. Not I bad know, considering. I know. Through StreamYard, whatever. Same I mean, you know, we, we, we didn't see each other is what I'm saying. But I, I'm glad. I'm glad that um uh, that it was it was a great show. It was a lot of fun. And, um, and you guys... Really held it down, so thank you. It was, uh, it was a good of show. Of course, it's it's funny because I always try and I always struggle with the Streamyard videos. Yeah, not Same. just because we're not there, but because my camera's here. But then y'all are here, so it constantly looks like I'm not paying attention. Oh yeah, dude, that like so like try to force myself to look at the camera. Right, right. You know? Well, I got to do that sometimes on this camera. Right, if I'm on, if I'm on with so whether we do this one on one with patrons and stuff and. And some, if I'm on a Zoom call, my camera, like well, if I'm talking to you guys, I'm talking here, but like I'm watching people, I'm, I'm over here and they're like, why isn't this guy looking at me? Is there mm. one new one? I feel like there's a new one. Uh, there is a new camera, but it's okay. not. It's, so it's we, not well, live yet. No, we had, so we had so we had Diego Luna in here and for some reason, one of the cameras kept overheating. Mm. So we wanted to make sure just in case that happened, He's we had another one ready guy. to go. It didn't, it didn't happen during the interview. Thank God. But, um. It just feels more scopey in here. It does. Also, this place looks great. I Thanks, know man. no one else can see it, but this is like it, immaculate. It, I know. It, thank it, you. It is apparently purely because. Oh, 100%. Yeah, we're we're going to come back in January, January, January and we don't matter. It's, it's going to be garbage be on the floor. No, no, no. no. <laughs> it's, it's, it, great in here. it was because we got, we were getting closer and closer. The whole point was to get to a place where we could have stars in like, uh, like Diego Luna, right? We're making a big push on, um, and I, and again, I, I gave credit on yesterday's show and I'll do it again here. Perry Nemiroff made that happen because we we had made it um and uh, we started we wanted to work together again mm -hmm. and we did our live streams and we, she brought Mary Mouser in here uh a little while ago and she was like I need a studio and I you know I heard you had a studio and could, could, is there anything we could figure out I go why don't we just I'll interview her you interview her and that's it yeah and then she's like can we do that c continuously I was like yes I was like yeah so then she's like because Clyder doesn't have a studio anymore yeah. Mm. So, so I mean, she and she's and Perry's a really good interviewer. So she's just tired of not being 
in the room with people. Of course. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, you tell me who you want, you know? And she's like, and so I'm leaving last week and she goes, Hey, I think this is pretty silly question, but would you want Diego Luna? <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm like, yeah. yeah. And then, and then she's like, well, I, I'm pretty sure I can get them. Um, and then it was, I was leaving on Thursday to go to Solvang yeah, yeah. with my, with my family for vacation. And she's like, they're offering Thursday and Friday. Oh no! And I'm like, you got to be kidding me, right? And I, she, I was like, I was like, the only time I could do is like Thursday morning, you know. And so she's like, let me see what they can do. She's like, they they think Thursday morning is going to work, but well, I'll let you know. And I hadn't heard anything back. She's like, she's like, hey, they can't do Thursday. I'm like, great. They're going to be fresh. How about Monday? Like, yes. <laughs> I was like, yes. I'm one for a second. I was like, well, no wonder he told us to kick rock. Yeah, he's no, like, no, no, no. I got here. No, no, no. It was, it was, Don't even show up. It was, yes. No, it was Monday. It was Monday Fair. where they, where they, um, then they set it up. We came in and Brett masterfully has set this place up. We're, we're, and we, we agreed yesterday. We're at like 80% right now because we still yeah. want to do, we want to get rid of this table. Mm -hmm. We want to get rid of this stuff over here. Mm -hmm. Um, and we want to kind of build it out a little bit more. Even the outside looks like a green room. Man. It, you nice. know, I know everything's kind of working. Well, the publicist got a chance to just sat down over here. Nice. They chilled out. Diego took a phone call in the backyard. He was like, <laughs> it was like, and it was like, it was great. Cassie and Andor wandering your backyard. It was, amazing. So funny it was so surreal, but it was like, <laughs> but he, but he was, he loved it. And he's just like, this is amazing. This is relaxing. It's great like, interview too. Thank you. Thank Solid. You. Yeah. And we'll, we, and we'll talk about part of it. I said, and I knew how upset you would be with me if I didn't at least ask him about I the mean, Marvel I think rumors. It's a good, it's I, a good I had to ask. I like his answer too. So we'll get into that that more but we have we got he a lot broke of his silence i know articles i know on the i know broke his silence but i know he was silent but it broke i know well it was his answer was pretty fantastic but there's a lot to talk about and we'll and we'll get into oh, yeah there, there was one other story that I, it isn't news anymore but you covered it on your tiktok about uh, uh donald glover as well i know we were looking for stories yeah yeah yeah, yeah. well let's let's start Hypno with no hustler himself yeah, well yeah, the, the first the first <laughs> one see I, my tenure dissertation on childish's <laughs> spider-man journey did up I yeah. did. Well, I, the, I timed it wrong. Well, everything I want to talk about here. Let's. We're gonna. It's. It's just so much. And again, I know we covered it a lot on Big Thing yesterday, but I didn't have the guys on to really break it down. And there's some new elements to everything that's going on in DC right now. And James Gunn, I think, is. Um, I, I think he's getting hammered for the for the wrong for the wrong reasons. Agreed. A, a lot. Um, I think that you know, anytime you come into this decision. Or, or, or role, he knew it. He said it himself, right? He said it himself inside of this post that he and Peter Safran both knew that this was going to be tough, and you knew you're going to get hammered on on sides. But I think he's getting he's getting nailed before we even see the finished product. A shared universe has never ended. No. This is such a silly thing it to be is, mad at. It People is. are and mad then, at him for things he did not do. Well, and, and I don't want to get into it again because we talked about it at great length yesterday. And big thing, but then he's got like stuff like with Ray Fisher going on, right? Like Ray Fisher. Dude, that Ray now, Fisher tweet is a it's lot. it's bad. So my 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 thing, what I said to Winston about it too, and you know, again, I don't want to rehash it all the way through, but. Um, I, I don't take away anything that Ray Fisher went through on that set. And I think his fight is, is a just fight and he should fight that fight. Um, and whatever he can, he, you know, he sh his voice should be heard on that side of that. He was in the wrong in this tweet. I think his fight is justified. And I think he has been right. Against Gunn, you think it's justified? No, 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 okay. no. Oh. His fight. Right. But I don't right. think Gunn has anything to do with this fight. Has nothing to do with it. And, and the, the, my, my issue was not with the fact that like he wasn't the initial thing when, when James Gunn had liked Tudyk's thing. Mm -hmm. And then Fisher's like, what are you doing, man? It's like, you like and saying guns like, whoa, misinterpreted, misinterpreted. I'm sorry. My apologies. And there's screenshots and, of that. And then, but Ray Fisher's like, cool. I accept the apology. Let's, let's move on. Gun auto deletes. Six months. And because of what happened to him in the past. Yeah. Ray Fisher should have done that research mm -hmm. before just doing what everybody does on social media and just hits the thing and goes after him. And he's, he's, he's in the wrong on this one. about yeah. being smart. He's got such a big platform about doing his research and being smart about this exact thing. Yeah. It's really messy that this time he didn't do the exact thing he's been good at so far. You're shaking your head. Do you, you I agree? Know, I or? agree with you. I'm just shaking my head about the, I, I've been a very, very vocally supportive of Ray Fisher. And this just was a giant step in it. Like yeah. it just, cause the problem is um, you lose so much credibility when you react without looking and I, and I get it because the thing is when you are dealing with trauma, when you're dealing with <clears throat> uh, constantly being on the defensive and trying to call out things, 
you you start to uh, w- 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 I think uh, the term is called uh, what like hearing zebra hooves. Oh yeah, like oh the boy who cried wolf. That type well, of not, not necessarily the boy who cried wolf, but the idea of like you hear hooves, you shouldn't immediately think zebras. You should think horses first. You know what I'm oh, I saying? See what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. So this idea that immediately thinking that James Gunn was trying to slight you, right? Instead of again, have a meeting, talk, look have a at, conversation. Look at the, or if if not that, at the very least, make sure what you're talking about isn't. The tweets auto delete. Right, you know what I'm saying. Right. It feels like the first time he reacted instead of responding. He's usually yeah. good at responding, and, this and that's time what he I'm reacted. saying. Like that's, that's a, messy, and that's why, like, it's like uh, again, this has nothing to do with with everything that he's gone through. Because I think that, as I said to you off air, and I said on air. I can't imagine being in his shoes. I can't. I can't imagine right. living his experience. I. I can't. Um, right. But this is a different thing. You went after. You went after this guy without even having a conversation because you did what everybody else does, and you go on social media and you just react without having a conversation. Well, the other thing that makes it hard, just again from somebody that also pushes back on a lot of this stuff when it happens constantly. Yeah. Um, you really have to have something. Because there are so many people who are anti, uh, you're just being woke or you're just right. whatever, whatever. Right. You have to, you cannot miss. Right. If you miss, not only do Great you point. kill you any idea Great of point. people taking that seriously. You but add to the narrative. Yeah, They immediately go, see, you're just overly sensitive yeah. about nonsense and this right. is all BS. Right. And it you diminishes a lot because of his other points. It, it does. And unfortunately, like I think he still has more, way more of a fight to fight. Right. And the next time he actually puts a legitimate thing out that everybody's going to be, he's going to go, oh, here we go. Here he's, he's, he's now, who, who's he going after now? Right. And it's like, and that's, and that's mm-hmm. unfortunate because, you know, there's a lot that happened to him that sucks. But anyway, like I said, I don't want to go too far into it, but it's sure. just part of the drama that in general that, um, that, Gun and Saffron are going into, and there's there's a lot of stuff going on. So this is just one of the reports, and again, comicbookmovie.com. DC studio boss James Gunn, he teases Deathstroke, plans and confirms future Elseworlds projects, whatever the hell that means. Once again, addressing fan questions on social media, DC Studios co-CEO James Gunn has confirmed we can expect more Elseworlds projects. You guys got to exp- explain what the hell that means. <laughs> sure. While also strongly hinting at a long overdue plans for Deathstroke. Uh, all right. The new DCU is rapidly starting to take shape with the first project set to be announced by DC Studios next month while James Gunn and Peter Safran are working are hard at work, excuse me, creating an eight to ten year plan, which is interesting considering their deals only what, four years? Mm-hmm. Um, that will finally give a proper shared universe. There's still some uncertainty around how the Batman and Joker franchises are gonna fit into it. Now, after recently debunking reports that uh, reports that DC Studios is considering bringing Robert Pattinson's Dark Knight into the DCU. Gunn has now confirmed on Twitter that we can expect more Elseworlds stories. That means both R-rated franchises will be left alone to continue, leaving Matt Reeves, Todd Phillips, and DC Studios free to forge ahead with their respective plans without any forced crossovers. Batman wasn't rated R, though, was it? No, but uh, I, I'm was wondering if this is an implication huh. of something. With all signs pointing to everyone in the DCU being recast, don't be surprised if Peacemaker Season 2 falls under this Elseworlds. Now, and Elseworlds is kind of like the multiverse. Um, yeah. Uh, Blade it, yeah. as well. In other news, Gunn has also teased future plans for Slade Wilson, a.k.a. Deathstroke. So, the original plan in the DCU has been that Joe Manganiello to follow his Justice League cameo with a lead role in the Batman after taking aim at Ben Affleck's Dark Knight. DC's Terminator was set to appear in his own solo outing from the raid director gareth evans unfortunately none of that would become a reality so we're guessing gun won't bring back magnello bringing back his links to the snyderverse but we can't wait to see what the plan is for deathstroke in the dcu um all right so that's that's part of it there's a lot more to, to cover inside of this but let's just let's just start here sure uh, all right this elseworld stuff so I, this so is like Superman Red Sun is probably the most famous Elseworlds. Okay. So imagine like the alternate reality. It's so, like Logan, so, basically. Yeah, there's yeah. just something like this is your main storyline and then it's like, boop, so you can play. And I think that this is kind of what I was saying with doing a DC Black Label, like doing an R-rated universe that's over here and then doing your shared universe that's here. I think that's going to make them stronger than Marvel because then you're not waiting for everything to tie right. together. I think it's genius. And, and it, it's exactly like you It's exactly like you said. The easiest way to think about it is, is a multiverse type situation. It just does doesn't have any direct effect on the main story we're trying to tell. Right. So it's this idea of exactly that. You want to, like, there is a famous uh, Superman story that came out when Obama was in office where Clark was black and he ended up being the president or essentially being Obama as well as being Superman. So, like... Is that Val Zod? What was his name? Um, Neil before Val Zod. Cal, Cal, Cal. <laughs> <laughs> 
I <laughs> what is <it's> Obama? Right. <laughs> I was <laughs> uh, Neil before Neil, Neil before Zod. <laughs> <laughs> I will rule you. Um, Cal, Cal Harris? Cal Cannot place Harry, it. Calvin Harris. The DJ. Kevin Harris is a guy. Like, just a dude. It doesn't just matter like, right now. That's the guy matter. you can meet. Yeah. Point, point is, is exactly that. So it's this idea that, like, yes, Batman exists in this completely different universe, but it is the Robin Pattinson with Colin Farrell, all that right. stuff, versus, you know. So there'll be more of that. So, I mean, I get that. I understand that. I think it's a good move. I think it's smart. It's, it's essentially what DC is doing now. It's mm-hmm. just, it's basically, we're doing exactly what we were doing, except instead of the DCEU, we're just replacing that with the DCU. It's and the, it's got a map as opposed yeah, to before right. where they were like, well, they we don't know a, how to connect idea. it. Right, right. So the DCU is actually going to be connected with these other Elseworlds projects, which is which is fine. I, I understand that. It'll make you money. Cool. So the question then starts to become, are these remaining DCEU projects, whether it's Aquaman, Shazam, any of those, are those Elseworld projects at the moment? It seems like it would be. I don't. To, I'm, okay, do, do we know what the current release schedule is for everything? As yeah. it stands, right I now. think it's still Aquaman last. Yes. Flash in the summer. Blue Beetle, but weirdly between those two, yeah. and Shazam and, and March. So Shazam is March, yes. And then um, Shazam, Shazam, Flash. Flash, is, Blue Beetle, Aquaman. Correct. That seems weird. Because <laughs> Flashpoint could end things oh, nicely. That's what I'm saying. I think that, can, moves. that can be an easy bow to wrap up the DCEU and move into your next plan. Yeah. So that seems weird not to shuffle those. I know it sucks to keep shuffling dates. You almost want to do that one more time. You would think so. And like, look, the room, I mean, like, the rumors are that Ben Affleck had a cameo. That cameo is gone out of, not of the, I don't think you can move, remove it out of the flash thing is too big, but they're moving out of Aquaman. Um, the cameo from Henry Cavill in the flash is apparently and Gal gone. Gadot, apparently. And Gal Gadot as, as well. So like that's, um, that's yeah, all that. I mean, is there so much? And that was then leading into that question to where I want to get your perspective of it is that, there is the quote that, you know, because James Gunn has been on Twitter a lot. And I, my personal opinion is he needs to get off. I think that mm-hmm. he, I, I like, I like how, I like how open he is with everybody. Mm-hmm. I like how he addresses everything and he wants to be, you know, just uh, clear with everybody. Mm-hmm. And I respect that. He's got too much to do to worry about checking his tweets right now. He's got a, he's got a, he, I, I, but anyway, my point is inside of that tweet, one of the tweets, he wrote this whole explanation, uh-huh. not only saying, well, you know, we knew that all this kind of the tough decisions we made, we knew that it was going to be met with backlash, basically. But the unclear thing that he said was when someone asked him a question about like, oh, so it looks like everybody's getting rec- recast except the Suicide Squad. And he said, that's not true. Not everyone's getting um, recast except the Suicide Squad. But he didn't say anything except those words. Right. So the question is, who is getting recast and who isn't? I think everyone that is directly tied to the Justice League gets recast, which means I, I think know, Shazam dude. might be safe because it is like that Superman wasn't Henry Cavill definitively. You he, know what I mean? But I he think just that, Gal Gadot. It seems like that he he didn't seem there was some. Thing you think on, she's safe? It it appeared that way on Instagram or something. Something that he said that he wasn't getting rid of Gal or and then and then even the Patty Jenkins story wasn't that they wanted to not do that. They, they wanted it to play into their dc so, and that was her issue she she had yeah. a, she had a plan and they had a different plan uh, i happen to think and i'm going to shut up in a second but i happen to think that the dc that the plan as much as i love gal gadot and all that if you cut cavill you got to cut everybody else because that was, that's going to cause such a stink he's the golden boy yeah. like he's the one that the fans wanted back most yeah. and 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 again i don't blame james gunn because he's not the one that brought it back sounds like it was the rock so like it to me james gunn's getting yelled at because of something that he had no control over he probably wouldn't have had him appear in black adam if he somehow had control a year ago but i think the and and i personally just my my perspective is that him being on twitter is is genius marketing for dc i know he's got a lot of work to do but we're talking about it i think every time he tweets that's a lot of marketing yeah. dc could use that's just it, mental health i just worry about him yeah, yeah. no I, I get that too but it also feels like he's it, it it is not a i'm on twitter all day it feels like okay the, pre- the president's gonna speak for 10 minutes today ask your questions and it feels like he doesn't comes, always go well when the president tweets oh i don't know well, i didn't, I didn't. <laughs> Can, consider that your internet town hall that and that's still not helpful but i but i but i'm saying the idea that he it seems like he's on there for about 10 to 15 minutes a day just to put out his statement answer a couple questions and bounce to go do real work mm-hmm. you know what i mean and i don't, I don't necessarily think that that's a bad thing considering we were, continue to talk about how zaslov continues to make decisions and not explain a damn thing or give warning right but and, he, it's again though it's like but the i think that 
I guess it's just because of my stance against social media at this point, right? I sure. just I I think that you you can speak through your actions, right? You can speak through the material. You but I think that it's Zaslov's actions spoke poorly. So no, he but has I'm, to I'm talking more about gun right now. Sure, like, sure. And it's like it's like you put out you like. You've put out movies that continuously make money. You yeah. put out TV shows that are continuously critically acclaimed. Let people bitch and then put it out and they're either going to like it or they're not going to like it. But it's like, I just worry what I think as, as a human being, the guy's working all day in the meeting. He, and he has, let's, let's say he's got a great meeting that he's, that he's just had and just put together his projects. And then he opens up his Twitter yeah, and he just sees filth. I don't care who you are. The fact it's going to ruin your day. The, the fact that Fire James Gunn was trending yeah, for so long. For like that's going to be the part where Saffron is probably like, I'm glad I am not the face that's of this. That's what I'm saying. That, like, I'm right. your co-chair here, but I... Right. I that's why I don't understand why Kathleen Kennedy still wants to do this. Yeah. Like, I, like the hate. Because yeah. she probably isn't on Twitter. She that's probably, true also. Real, realistically, that's true also, yeah. she probably is not on Twitter. But yeah. I, it's it's funny because I could not stop laughing. Somebody put out, when, when Fire James Gunn was, was trending, somebody put out some TikTok video about how upset they were about Henry Cavill. And the first thing they said is, we, we can all agree that we were all excited about the future of the DCU after Black Adam. I was like, were we? Were we all really excited? I was like, okay, I guess. I wasn't like, come well, on Because it's always the same question. What's the plan? Right. And, it, and that's the thing that I don't understand is that he's making a plan. At least yeah. there's a plan. It's the same thing that I've been waiting for Lucasfilm to do forever. Also, people did not show up to Black Adam. The box office right. clearly states that if you are guy, if you guys are the masses you claim to be, then where were you? They showed up enough. Is that the problem is there was too much money to go into? I mean, the movie made what four hundred million. But in superhero money, no, I know, I know, I know. I, I, it, it didn't. It, it either lost money or it broke even or whatever the hell the report. Sorry, it, it, you're one hundred percent right. It didn't make the money it should have made. Yeah, but it's still it's also because of the cost and everything too. And that movie shouldn't have cost as much as made. Well, I don't, I don't disagree. Yeah. I just, I just know that I was Mister Black Adam, and everybody was like, "Really, you liked that?" Well, and I was like, "Where were you guys if you?" wanted this shared universe because right. clearly the rock was the guy that was going hey we're gonna put this back together right he was trying he, was, he trying. was trying to be that guy he was so it's essential and again i'm not going super politics because I don't, i'm not giving a, a left or right but it, what, it, what it reminds me of though is what the rock was doing is right now the the democrats are trying to do everything they can until the until the republicans take over the senate in january they're trying everything that they can and that's what the rock was doing just the rock is just like the rock's going wait they're going to put somebody else in there hey do this because you said by the way but just before I, I about you're going to go a different route no no but you you said just before about henry cavill like you know but that was a year ago he from what the rumors are is that he shot that that in september scene in september but i'm saying the james would have shot that down a year ago like you wouldn't have let that film you right he shot that like four months ago yeah, yeah. man and then he they put it and then they, and they put it in the movie because they wanted because they just got the, the deal signed so gun at this point is probably going you know as his negotiation he's going and now like even look like josh harwitz who had the interview with um with henry cavill and that interview blew up because everyone was so excited about about that cavill uh news and and the, the Everybody's so excited he's coming back, and Kevin has this big smile at every interview he's talking about. It. James Gunn and Saffron are like, oh, this is going to kill us because we can't, because our plan doesn't involve this guy. Right. And it's like, this is, they're not stupid. They know, he knew that this was going to happen. They also know that their Superman movie has to be the next best superhero movie. It's got to be the best. Reeves. Yeah. Like, it has, the it's, bar is so it's high. It's got to be so good. And and that's got to be the one out the gate, arguably. Like, it yeah. kind of has to be. It really, it's And I'm it's thinking true. it needs to kind of get out, like, Christmas 2024. Like, it's got to be, remember we talked a month ago, we had that pizza bet. Well, he's been I writing. Think it's be that's what he's I been think, writing. I yeah. think I win Joe's pizza you by way of, you, you know might. what I mean? You might. You guys I think know he's cast. how I guess the easiest way to answer this question is to do reverse math. How old is Chris Evans right now? I think he's yeah. probably 40. He's 40. If meaning, I was to guess. So, if 2019, if, if you were guessing that, so that's three years ago, so he'd have been about 37. So, he would have been about 27, 26 when he first did First Avenger. He's 41, yeah. So he was about 26 when he did First Avenger. I bet you that's kind of what's happening is they have this idea of whoever Superman is next to pull a 10 year tenure like Chris Evans did. Uh -huh. And that's why Cavill got cut in their mind. I don't think it's because they're anti Cavill. I don't even think it's necessarily because they're, you know, um, have, like, I'm sure they probably like it that they're like, he oh, was we like have 30. He was like 30 at the time. He was 30? Because, well, it came out in 2011, didn't it? The what, uh, Captain America, the first Captain America. I think it was 2010. I, I think it was two years after I Iron Man. Either. I think it was 2010. It must have been 11 because it would have been the year yeah, before so, Avengers. So that's only 11 years ago. Okay. Uh, no, 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 no. It's 10. Yeah. I guess, okay, you've been right at 30. Okay. The only reason why I asked is just that. I was trying to, I was trying to, to figure that out. 
2011, yeah. July 2011. I was just trying to figure that out because, like I said, we said Cavill's, what, 35, 36? Cavill, Cavill is in his 40s as well. He's in his 40s. 40, 40. So that's my thing, is that I understand, you know, with, with Superman and everything, but considering Superman being a Kryptonian doesn't really age, and I'm not no, saying that No, I get Cavill, it. Right, right, sure. You, I, look, I... I am very. I'm. I'm bummed that Cavill's not coming. Back. I agree. I'm really bummed about it because I wanted to see him. I don't think he got a chance to really shine in that role because I think he really understands the character really well, and I think he would have been incredible. And I was looking forward to Man of Steel too. That was the, like one of my most anticipated thing. I was like, they're gonna, they're gonna run it out that way. They can make him a new part of it. Um, but I get it. I he's do Andrew get Garfield. It. I think he's gonna come back like Andrew Garfield. You think I so? think but Kingdom I, Come will be his no way. Maybe, home. but I, I, I understand. But I really do understand if you're gonna. But that's what that's getting back to the original part of the conversation. That's the tough part is that when they when they said no Cavill, I'm like, all right, well then they got to do a fresh reboot because if you don't do a fresh reboot and then Gal Gadot shows up and Momoa stays in an Aquaman, you're like, well, why'd you get rid of Cavill? And then you're, right. you have a stage of people like I kept saying, what Hall H has to be this year is your Justice League on stage, yeah. and if half of them are people we've seen before, it's going to be messy for the other half. Right. It's got to be a clean slate. Yeah, I, you would assume, unless they're going to do, you know, Elseworlds. Elseworlds with those characters. But, but why not do an Elseworld? With Cavill. Because they probably want to focus on It's uh, so, it's, I do not, I do not envy them <laughs> at, at all, dude. <laughs> at, at, at all. It's so, like, you really got to, like, I just think that they should have just blowing it up. Yeah. I, I, yeah, at see, this point, if you're going to cut Cavill. Have the movies come out, end it with Flashpoint, it. rewrite the third act. I That's don't it. know if Ezra is allowed to film. What can I ask? You gotta get rid do, of Ezra. do you yeah. do you remember? I mean, obviously we talked about this last week. Did did they full on say he's not coming back ever? They said that he's not coming back right at now. At this point, or they, they want to like do that. another project with him. That, that's, what that. that's what and they so said. That's what they said. So that's why I think you're right. Either a Kingdom Come or an Elseworlds down the line. No, no, no. Line. But I think they want to do another character with him. That's, not even. Okay. Not even. So I, th right. I think it's too confusing and, and dare I say it, painful for a lot of fans. And to tease if he comes back for one movie the way that Garfield did, because the difference is Garfield was liked as a as an actor. Garfield was like, you know, Garfield's movies started to play the same way the prequels did over time, right? And mm. there's emotional moments inside of those sure. movies. Henry Cavill was never like though his like, never really disliked. Maybe people didn't love Man of Steel. I loved Man of Steel, but there were some people who didn't who didn't like it. But Henry Cavill was never the one ever. Everyone wanted to see Cavill back. Mm -hmm. Everybody. Like, when Garfield was gone and they brought in Holly, it was like, oh, bring Garfield back. Or Marvel, you got rid of Garfield. There was none of that. Right. It wasn't this. I, I certainly don't envy whoever puts on the cape next. That's the person That's I'm most the, worried about. But I, not even Gunn. Like, the face of it. Right. But I'll, I'll be honest with you. I think part of the reason why nobody was never harping for Garfield like that over Holland is also because you're dealing with a completely different scenario. All of a sudden, Spider-Man is in the MCU. True. Mm -hmm. Yes. Versus just, this is another Spider-Man reboot. If you be reboot Spider-Man again, then you're like, why would you a do Garfield like that? Absolutely. Absolutely, that's but bad. you now, but this, but I don't think that's going to change the fact. And and the counterpoint to what I'm about to say is that that the MCU is established, right? But sure. like you are introducing a new Superman into this new thing. The the what I was going to say is ah, there'll be enough time to heal it that people won't care. But I agree with Coy. I think that they're going to get this thing out fast, and I think within the next two years. And you really got to cast this brilliantly. Yeah. And you got to make people, because people forgive fast if they love it. Yes. And the second, there will be people who are just going in, you know, the the, the normal people who are just going to go in to hate it. It doesn't matter if it's the best movie that was ever made. They're still going to hate it. But you got to, but you really have to get the people that are like, I don't know, man, you really got to win me over here. And if, and it's word of mouth, because if you, you're right. You don't make a good movie on this one. And your first, the first one out, no matter what it is, yeah, it's got to be great. And that's why Blue Beetle's in a really messy spot. Because yeah. Blue Beetle is coming out between two legacy films that may or may not count, but right. I think will be good films. And as of right now, all of the diehards are rebelling against these two films blindly. Right. And then Blue Beetle may or may not move forward. But also Blue Beetle can't really kick off the universe. No. Because it's going to, it mentions Flash, I hear, and it mentions some of the other characters. Okay. So how do you have something that ties halfway into the old one, tie halfway into the new one? And how does that movie get a chance to go forward? Like Blue Beetle, I think, is, is right up there with Superman is in the worst spot. Yeah, I would say so. I feel for Zola. Uh, well, um, it depends. It depends on how much of a standalone movie it really is, right? Because if it's if it's a standalone enough and there's only a couple of references here and there, it can still exist and you can still make it part of your DCU if it doesn't tie in and affect anything in a way. But would you want that to be your first? Not necessarily, but I mean again, if it's if it is it if it is a it's a standalone thing where it doesn't like so the difference is like the flash and 
Wonder Woman and Superman, these are all established movies and part of like the Snyderverse and mm -hmm. part of these things that people already associate with something. Yeah. Nobody associates Sholo and, and uh, Blue Beetle with anything yet because mm -hmm. you can establish this first story that comes out it's just a standalone story is the thing. And then people can say, well, how does this fit into the DCU? And then Gunn and Saffron go, well, let us tell you. It might be like Incredible Hulk. Yeah, like, right. where that's they, right. You know, that's right. right. Get out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> I, was just, I was patiently waiting my turn to go, I bet you this is going to be Edward Norton, Incredible Hulk, just not a bad movie, even though I don't hate that movie. But it's going to be, it's literally going to be Incredible Hulk. And they go, yeah, it connects. Like, see, look, and, and whatever, whatever. And then your ass just has to take every thought. That was Winston's idea, head. everyone. He said it first. That that's was Winston's right. 100%. Well, I'll tell you the reason why that. Corey got it out first because he's been drinking trade coffee. I said, so. uh, look at the cup. It is. Trade, trade coffee, ladies and gentlemen. I'll tell you, so loving trade coffee and really loving what they have brought to this show and brought to this studio, man. It's like the second, I'll tell you, it was funny because um, we walked in and Koi looked at the, the coffee. It was empty when he walked in. <laughs> Koi looked at it the same way my dog looks at the, the, the bowl when there's no food in it. And, and, he, and he walks in and I was like, you want, you, you, yeah, it was like the emperor. You want this? Somehow and coffee returned. Somehow coffee returned, <laughs> and it did return. And trades back with us, and we're so excited to have him back because it's it's just amazing. We love it, and the, the holidays are coming up, and it's time to start thinking about where you're going to get people for your loved ones. I mean, it's right around the corner, and you can get it now. Go get trade coffee if you're looking for something to get the hardest people to shop for. If they're coffee drinkers, I'm telling you, trade coffee because if they love drinking coffee, if you love drinking coffee, and who doesn't, you have to check it out. It, trade makes it very easy to get better coffee than delivered fresh from the finest local roasters around the country. If you're getting your coffee from the grocery store and drinking the same coffee every day, you need to try something even better. That's Trade. It's a subscription service. It's a coffee subscription service that makes it simple to discover new coffees and make your best cup of coffee at home. Whether you already know what you like or you're new to specialty coffee and you need some help, Trade makes it easy and convenient. We've been with them for a little bit. We love that the uh, the roast and everything too. And it's, I'm telling you, man, people come in here now and they're always looking for me to brew that trade coffee. And Koi even got himself, you got the subscription and, and it's everything. Bomb, man. It's, the, it's so it's good. It's so good. The it's, smells. It's the best. So treat yourself or the coffee lover in your life with Trade Coffee. Right now, Trade is offering, this is the best deal, $30 off a subscription and access to limited time holiday specials at drinktrade.com slash big thing. That is drinktrade.com slash big thing. Get $30 off drinktrade.com slash big thing. All right. Moving on. Yeah, so look. It's because the McDonald's coffee slowed you down. I was a little faster. Wrong. That was it. <laughs> but there's but there's a couple. I mean, there's there's more inside of this. I mean, we could, we could hey, there's so many other stories, but I, there's just so much with this, all this. What? Well, like the fact that Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, and a whole bunch of oh, others yeah, are now about, also yes, tell us, tell us, Tell us that story. Um, dude, this is one of those things where, like, now this infinite fight I have with my girlfriend about how, about physical media is driving me crazy because I'm sure you saw, Koi, they're pulling Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, uh, and I can't remember what the third reported thing is. They're all being pulled but in January. Got to own from it. H from HBO Max. So now... You need to go and buy that physical media copy because in your mind you're thinking to yourself, "Oh no, no, I'll be on the streamer, I'll be fine." And all it takes is somebody being like, "Nah, I'm good." I don't. If I love something more than a B, I own it. I don't trust anybody. If it's better than a B, which and these she are, doesn't, and what's funny is she doesn't get it until I showed her this story, and then she got real quiet and she was just like, <laughs> right. "Just don't take up the whole damn second oh, it's the whole like, house, closet dude. with it." Like, just what am I, am I supposed to do? So what is so they're getting rid of? Every, I mean, it's just another. Why do you think they're doing that? Residuals. Yeah. They do not want to have to keep paying people. Yeah, that is that sense. is literally they're trying it. to save money, man. They're trying to save money at every corner. I mean, look, I, I, again, it's another one of those things where it's just like, you get the strategy. It's like, it's like, it's I understand cold. the strategy now. Yeah, it's cold, but, but it's I, show I understand the but strategy. I'll yeah. be honest. I did a Law and Order SVU. Check me out on TikTok at the Swaggy Blurred yep. about selling your soul. And yeah. it was literally the idea. <laughs> the whole the whole thing was about a Rams fan who sold his soul so the Rams could win the Super Bowl in L. A. And right. now the Rams are dog. Sh dog and stuff. so <laughs> it's the it's the same issue. Yeah. Cool. You're gonna save yourself some money now, but what are you losing in in the legacy? What are you losing in people that are gonna get fed up with you constantly doing this and not actually coming up with a counter plan? And right. what are you gonna lose in goodwill towards a brand? Absolutely. Like the brand itself is so solid right now. Specifically beyond the fans, which is gonna get with creators. You already have a bad taste in your mm -hmm. mouth from the previous regime about how you handled releasing these movies. And talent's already mad at streaming services mm -hmm. for not paying them as is. Now you're cutting even more Absolutely. that they're already not making. No, it's, are, it's a mess. You were building a lot of bad will. This and town is like a powder keg right now. Well, that, and that's what I'm saying. It's not saying that money isn't all powerful. It is, but there is a point 
at which if you sell your soul too much for profit or breaking even or whatever, you are not going to have what you had right. beforehand. Well, there's always a way to in this, whether they bring it back or not. But I think, you know, one of the things that with like Sony is doing this so well, and I think the other studios are going to start to follow suit from this, especially Warner Brothers. Um, Sony doesn't have a platform, mm -hmm. right? So they're not, they're not beholden to, well, we got to release it here. We got to release it there. Like, no, we got a product. Sell it to Netflix. We got a product. Sell it to Amazon. We got a product. Sell it to Hulu. You know, whatever. whatever. Yeah. I think Warner Brothers needs to start doing that. I think that's what they're doing. Right. They're going to start licensing out their stuff to make more Pull money. Pull it three months. Get the demand back up. Sell it to Amazon. That's exactly right. And that's what you need to do. I think because they already made some deal uh, Warner Brothers with yeah. Amazon for something. I can't remember what it was, but some, some one of their products they're they're putting on Amazon. I think that they can continue to do that and make exclusive stuff for HBO Max when when they have to, and you know House of the Dragon and things of that nature. And and but I think that they need to start doing that because until these movies come out, like on the positive side of things, if or or optimistic, if you will, if the James Gunn Peter Safran universe becomes this mega thing that they want it to become, mm -hmm. and the first movie comes out, that's what they're waiting for. Mm -hmm. They're waiting for this. They're they're crossing their fingers, going, "Okay, guys, trust your plan. Go for it." And if it's like you know, then at the holiday party, like we did it, <laughs> as opposed to, you know, if this doesn't work. We're in trouble. Yeah, and like we keep saying, that first movie. And yeah. I think that's why it's a 10-year plan on a four-year contract. Yes. Is because if it doesn't work, then that plan gets scrapped. That's movie, right. Movie two. That's right. But if it does work, then they then have leverage to get extended. Which, is, which makes total business sense. You're not going to sign someone up for a 10-year plan. The gate. It's, a, it's a rookie contract with a fifth-year option. That's absolutely if, right. That's exactly what it is. That's absolutely right. And it's like, okay, look, although the rookies, you know, have, have a... No, I get it. It's even more so than a rookie. It's, it's, it's like an established... They got Gun in his prime right Yeah, now. they got veteran you know, another yeah, team they, to come right. over. Right, they, they, they stole well, him from another, from another yeah, franchise team. Franchise. Yeah, franchise. Yeah. I'll put it to you this way: It still feels like a rookie because, sure, he's been a, a director and a right. creator. He's a rookie. But a he's a rookie, rookie GM. He's a rookie GM or yeah. executive. Yeah, that's right. You know? that's so right. it's that was college for him. That was right. college <laughs> ball was making these multi-million dollar movies, and now we're like we're handing right. you a billion dollar industry. What you gonna do with it? That's right. As long as he's not Michael Jordan as an owner, then he's. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> he's great baseball. He was so good when he. No, no, no. He, he was he was he was a GM of a, of a, oh, of was a he? basketball. Oh, I thought team. it was he's baseball. Still, he still owns the Hornets, yeah, and they're just not. They're just not. He's never been a great. He's just not a good uh, he's not a good collaborator well part of it too is that just because you are so good at one thing which is i think what some people can game. get nervous yeah. about you know the game and you're really good at it, you can't always translate it into other ways right. so finding other talent or finding if someone has that killer instinct well, but it or, relates to all this it's mm -hmm. collaboration yes and it's a matter of like because jordan if you've watched that thing and, and this all relates back to what we're talking about here but jordan is someone who has always been Jordan, and he's the reason why he's as good as he was, and the reason why, rest in peace, Kobe was as good as he was, was because of their massive egos, mm -hmm. and their, it's all about me right mm -hmm. now, and I, when it's time for me to pass, I'll pass, when it's time for me, but it's, but watch this and watch how great I am, you can't do that in a situation like this. Because I didn't know he had the Hornets, because like, mm -hmm. right. clearly that's it, not the face it's, of something. But it's not, that, but it's not, that's not, and that's why Saffron and James Gunn mm -hmm. are together, and they were able to say, because James Gunn wasn't going, well, I don't know, if I do it, it's got to be all me, he's like, no, I need Peter and Peter's like, well, I need James to do this, and that's why. Look, this plan could be a disaster. It could be like, he could put the Superman movie out. And look, I like James Gunn. I like I like what they're doing, and I'm going to support the plan. But I'm Superman's my guy. I like Superman's my is your like, you just buddy. Superman is the one that got me into comp like my dad huh. taking me to Christopher Reeve movies and watching those movies as a kid. I remember I have it somewhere. I don't know where the hell it is. I have a card that I got my dad um, that said. Happy Father's Day! Like you're the best dad in the world. Can we go see Superman three? Right, and <laughs> and and it was like because I just loved those movies so much. I had Superman stickers everywhere too, and and all of it. And if this movie is not good, I'm gonna go. That's what we're doing. Is it gonna and like and you know how critical I am on comedy. Yeah. And James Gunn's writing it. I'm, and I said I think he should do Knights of the Old Republic before the thing because I think how much of a fan he is and what he can do. If there is that James Gunn over style, like over style to where the you know, comedy style in Superman, mm. I'm out. Hmm. I think of Superman as having, you know, levity, but not James Gunn comedy. Right. So I think he knows that. Uh, but he does. it'll be very yeah. interesting to yeah. see how much you can take your own specific fingerprints off something that is still authentic. Totally. I, I think what will give you a better indicator, because obviously James Gunn does serious stuff better. Or well, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh <laughs> 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 that might be 
be a show first. That was amazing. The way, the way, the way you jumped. double took and then looked because, at it and then because, your brain had to go, oh, well, no. The reason why is in the middle of my sentence, my watch got me before the phone went off because it's a reminder to take it's a reminder to take my medicine. And so, like, I literally was like, oh, God. <laughs> Coin needs to take his medicine, too, but it's a smack. Get over here, yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, that's why I got the whole thing faster. This is why. That was Exhibit A. Uh, McDonald's coffee slows you down. I, I think the real... <laughs> apparently. That's right. Apparently yeah. it's slow motion. Um, Drinktrade.com. I, <laughs> I think oh, that's the, one long I think the indicator will be, because he's done plenty of serious stuff in the past, I think the indicator is Guardians 3. I think that might give you a little bit of resolve just because knowing that this is a an end and they've made it very clear. It's going to be emotional for sure. But 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 Guardians is tough because Guardians um it's it's required to have humor at this point. You you set up now there's definitely going to be emotional moments. There's definitely going to be from what I heard from Comic-Con people were crying in the just yeah. the trailer alone. Um and and I agree with you. There'll be a resolve, there'll be an ending, but there'll be a need for it because that's what the characters have called for i get that what i'm saying is if, if you just need proof that james can do it and do it for an extended period i think mm -hmm. this movie is going to still have its comedy but it's probably going to take that hard shift to more dramatic because I of hope the so. ending yeah and knowing that i hope that that gives you a, if, if he does it well i hope that gives you enough to have a little more faith oh, for the oh, Superman. I, I have faith that, uh, right now i have okay. faith i have faith for it it's it's not that i don't think that he can do it yeah, i'm yeah. just saying that if it turns out that's what it is i'll sure. be disappointed uh, sure, 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 do sure. i think he'll be able to handle it absolutely i think that and any and i don't think he should direct the first one out i really don't i think he's and he's writing it right now he's been writing it for a little bit I think, I think that he, was part of the sell. I, I think the script was mostly done, and that was part of coming yeah, into his job. I, I don't want him to be doing 100 things. I think, you, you think I mean, directing? You think he's in direction? No, no, no. no, no I'm, I, say, I'm saying I don't want him to because yeah. I think the script was mostly done when he attached himself to a 10-year plan. Right. Yeah. I think he needs to focus on the I agree with plan. you. I, I agree. Think, I, think, I think if he's going to do it, I mean, obviously he's going to be an EP on everything like Feige, right. but I think if he wants to get involved, write it, and then you can be like a more hands-on producer for yeah. it, but mm -hmm. let someone else direct it and then just step back. For a bit, yeah, and just and, and say, look, we we have our plan of where we need this to go with Superman. We're establishing this. We're establishing the you know his time at the Daily Planet and what he's going to do. And um and but I couldn't agree with you more. It is it's it's bad for Saffron and, and Gun right now, but it is going to be a oh, thing the for the face person. Of that cape. Yeah, man, who's like, behind that curl? It's got to be an unknown, and that's even more stressful. Yeah, I think that I think you have to give it to an unknown. I mean, or someone 100%. who's. Or someone who's or a little someone like young and on the rot. Like, well, like, an Austin like Henry Butler. Cavill. Remember, Henry Cavill was up for the role for Superman when Brandon Routh got right. it. Right. So that he's he was in the running for a long time. He was in. Who was that? I was thinking maybe uh, it's too small and not the right fit. I was gonna say Taron Egerton, but nah, not, Taren, he's nah, he's Wolverine. He's, he's yeah, and he's and he's probably. he doesn't have that. He doesn't have the look for it. I think no. that he's. But I think, and, and he's and he's well a little more, bit of a pretty boy side of you, and like sure, could, but I yeah, just he's, he's and he's, not, and he's, he's smaller, way too small. He's small. He's, he's like well, he's like five ten, five, five, but still, he's got, you want him to be you want him to be you want him to be Superman. Yeah, and I, there's there's tons of people out there, and I saw some of the, I can't I don't remember the guy's name, but I saw somebody when people were like this should be the next person, and I don't even know who it was. I don't know if they can act. Just blindly or like I see it. I said. That guy looks like Superman. <laughs> yeah. I said I don't know if he can act. Yeah. I said I don't. I have no idea. But that guy. About? Did you figure it out? No, I didn't. I I just saw it, it was like one of these <laughs> thirty seconds later. Yeah, I know, right? It was, I just figured it out in my head. But it was just one of these pictures. It was just one of these pictures, and I just pointed right away, and I go, "That guy looks like Superman." Superman more than most characters. The iconography is really yes. important because yes. uh, Batman wears a mask, Spider Man wears a mask, anyone can wear a mask with That's a lot right. of these characters. But Superman yeah. is on stamps since the 40s. That's like, true. there's a thing to us with him. And I think that's going to be different and really hard for anyone to play. Yeah. Because Henry Cavill is Superman. A hundred percent. Um, all right, some some other things, though, too, because like, like I said, there's so many news stories and we can barely even January's talk January's going to be exciting, but, guys. I thought uh, the year kicked off in February, but now we got yeah. so much hype. I got some more. So, Zach Levi, well, this is, let, let me, I'm going to also talk, I'm going to go into two things here. James Gunn on why studio interference won't be an issue and the position is different than it was with Zach. So, we're going to go with two things here with Gunn and then we're going to transfer into this um, this story with, uh, with Levi. So, this is what James Gunn says about, it's fair to say, this is from, um, comic book movie again it's fair to say that warner brothers gained a bit of a reputation for studio interference over the years particularly when it came to dc-based movies though every studio is guilty of it to some extent wb butcher uh, reportedly butchered david Ayer's suicide squad to the point that it was almost unrecognizable to the film that he originally shot and don't even get us started on the justice league debacle here we go with uh 
Anyway, though certain things that have been exaggerated or blown out of proportion, many fans feel that the previous Warner Brothers regime is to blame for DCEU's failings. I agree. So how do you recently... So how do recently appointed G DC studio bosses Gunn and Saffron plan to mitigate the potential minefield as they oversee the new DCE era? Basically, they won't have to. Gunn said to a fan on Mastodon that there's no need to worry about WBD uh, execs overriding his decisions by making it clear that things will be working a little differently on his watch than they did back in the Snyder era. The position is different than it was with Zach. Peter and I are the heads of the DC studios. The only studio interference would be from us. A recent that's why these these fire um, uh, gun the hashtag is silly. The only person that could actually fire him <laughs> is, is Zaslov. He's the only one. It's no, there's like this this whole thing of people that could and do it. And the funny thing is, is you know what Zaslov has made very clear, despite how much we have been complaining about him, you don't give up. What no. you think? Mm -hmm. no. So a recent report indicated that certain execs have expressed concern about Gun's lack of experience in this sort of role. Tough. Who cares? It doesn't matter. They, they've, he's got a deal. Eat it. Whether that's true or not, he is, appears to have taken a lot of responsibility. Uh, as things stand, it looks like a full reboot is being implemented, although Gunn hasn't outright confirmed it. We know that Henry Cavill and Dwayne Johnson are out. Yeah, but that's not true because they also said that Dwayne Johnson could potentially come back as Blackout. That was a confusing well, it says thing. for the time being, anyway. Yeah. So now here's this. Is now, but we're waiting to hear from the likes of Gal Gadot and Momoa. Now, Zach Levi indicated this. So a reliable source recently indicated that Zach Levi was done at Shazam and the Fury of the God Star has now taken to Twitter to share his response to the rumor. Zach Levi seemed pretty confident that his pals James Gunn and Saffron wouldn't, excuse me, would allow his tenure to Shazam to continue in the new DCU during a recent interview. But a report from a mostly reliable insider suggested that the actor would be joining Henry Cavill on the Cape su Superhero Unemployment Line. One of Levi's Twitter followers expressed their disappointment that he might be leaving the role, and he responded with the following. Ooh, I really wouldn't go believing everything you see on the internet. I'm Gucci, Ash. We all Gucci. So as far as Levi is concerned, he is very much still on board as Billy Bats and Shazam and seemingly expressed to remain in the role post-Fury of the Gods. Gunn hasn't addressed Levi's future specifically, but he did appear to indicate that, that not everyone from the DCEU would be recast. At least that's what we think he meant. So perhaps he really is safe. This is this. Wait, 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 wait. What, what did Chip say? I, I, I didn't know what <laughs> yeah. Alexander Ship said. Oh, or is, is he having a storm? No, this is. Or oh. is he having? Uh, this is. This is just. That's an old. I uh, got it. No, no, yeah. no, I get it. Was old. Like, I just didn't ever see it. But I, I didn't see that tweet. And oh no. <laughs> I'm kind of so sad. It's a legacy tweet. Like that's so. She said five years it was ago. December. Well, that says December 14th. 2017. Oh, 2017. 2017. Meaning, meaning right when Fox and Disney merged. Right. She said, "Y'all are really acting like this merger means they're recasting." Poor shit. Yeah. Yikes. Um, I can see this exactly 50-50. On one hand, <laughs> you got to sell a movie that's about to come out in February. Right. On the other hand. Great point. Like, I mean, Great every point. everyone on the internet's like, I'm not seeing it. It's not connected. What do you got to say to sell a movie? Right. That's out in two months, three right. months. So it's exactly right. Where the, You could see the meeting where um, Gunn's going to be like, okay, look, we're going to try to figure some stuff out. But we don't want to say anything that you're not coming back yet because you know, that's going to hurt the box office. It's but at the same time. David F. Sandberg uh, was just seen wearing the new DC logo. Yeah. Uh, they just had Ash uh, Angel, Asher Angel do an interview, and he's wearing the new WB hat. Zach saying this. I could also see on the other side, the other 50-50 is they very consciously didn't tie the first Shazam into the, the universe. Right. They could maybe have rewritten and retooled Shazam 2 because it's gotten delayed 72 times mm -hmm. to not tie in, and this could be a conscious Elseworld. So I would love, like Shazam is probably my favorite uh, of the kind of shared universe. Uh, like the Batman's my favorite of the DC modern, but like Shazam's up there. Yeah. Uh, I could see it continuing on. I hope it continues on, but it's not going to be said until the movie's out. It's such a crazy thing too, because Rob my red brought this up on Campy show the other day. And that's, so this, um, let's say Aquaman, Aquaman, the first Aquaman made a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. Now, will the second one make a billion? Probably not. Mm -hmm. But if it does, mm -hmm. what do you, do in that in that point because it's like you know if Are you, you have listening to me is that why you started giggling yeah. <laughs> no, but, but, uh, but you know but, but what the billion dollars no, no 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 just the fact that everything you said i was giving a, a verbal response like mm -hmm. just yeah. like mm -hmm. quietly like mm -hmm. peanut gallery but it's but it's true right <laughs> so if it makes a billion dollars yeah and you're saffron at that point and and let's say shazam she's yeah. the first year that shazam did okay it, it did good it did good for the amount of money that it cost. like you look at the difference when look, it came out budget etc but that's that's the, what we were just talking about black adam right that movie probably didn't make it. It probably made just as much as Black Adam, but it didn't Half cost. The cost right, and so The Rock not showing up in Shazam two might have just saved Shazam three. It's it's also right. from the standpoint right. of it. 
I think people already sort of knew this, but if you needed a reiteration that you can't just use a movie star to sell a movie anymore, like there, there are really rare, important. there are rare instances, but I think the thing that sold guardians more than anything about this idea of who are these people is this has bigger implications for the MCU. Whereas right. The Rock tried to be like, I'm The Rock, I'm taking a character. And I'm taking over the DCU. Heard, and I will, I single-handedly yeah. will launch this, but people go, well, what the hell is this? I hate saying this with The Rock because I love The Rock. I but do like too. his, But when he, when, now when you look back at it in hindsight, you know, him saying, he pretty much was making a push that he was going to like run the DCU. It's like when that porn star Mary Carey says she's running for president. Oh, you know what I mean? So dark, but it was, but, but, but I, I mean, like the parallel's not wrong. It's you know what I mean? It's, and I love the, I love the rock. Same. I love the rock, but it was just like he's like, yeah, I'm gonna. It's like I'm gonna be president. It's like, all right, you know. <laughs> and not long after he was running for president, according right. to a lot of people. Right, and I hate saying, I, look, I love The Rock. Yeah, but, I do but that's too. But it's but just like that. Was, you're, you're making this. Like, he's I'm, one of the last movie stars. Yeah. It's just movie stars are what movie stars are. Like, that's a really good point because, like, Tom Cruise couldn't start the Dark Universe. No. The Mummy. Do you know what I mean? Like, movie right. stars aren't universe Cause, cause starters. I would, the characters are. Because I would even make the argument at this point, Top Gun Maverick didn't do what it did because Tom Cruise. It did because Tom Cruise was in the original and, he made and a good the nostalgia movie. and yeah. he made a good movie. 100%. Yep. You put all of those together. It had nothing to do with Tom Cruise is doing it. Tom Cruise didn't. Jack Reacher didn't make a lot of money. Mission, right. Mission yeah. Impossible and Top That's Gun are established brands they're at this legacy point. At they're, this and point. They're, but they're also established. And it's not, still good. Legacy is part of the soup. But the it's still really good soup. No, 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 I agree. Yeah. yeah, because because there's only so long, because Vin Diesel doesn't go out and make so many different movies that crush all the time. Right. Fast, Fast and movies. Furious is a brand. That right. soup's starting to get a little a little salty. Right. But it's still making money. Right. And, and I, I think The Rock is really good at those movies. I, I, I love The Rock movies, but I think right. The Rock starting a franchise isn't what he thought it was. Because I would no. even make an argument. I understand that The Rock and Kevin Hart being like best friends in the industry and all that stuff, maybe in like real life, and they have good chemistry on screen. I would even argue that the Jumanji movies, my mom's calling. I would even argue the Jumanji movies, you again, you already had the Sabbath brand thing? there, yeah. and then you put the stars in, Absolutely. and then because it was good, it did work. Well, that's, that's why... I and I the the full quote of what Quentin Tarantino said. Right? Did you hear that? This quote? Yeah, and it was taken out of context. It was completely taken out of context. His I didn't hear it because in the essence of what he's saying is he was on Stern and he said along the lines that it's not Robert Downey Jr. that's selling that movie and he's a, and they're it not was Iron Man and it's, or Robert. Or, yeah, well, it's not Robert Downey Jr. that's selling Iron Man. It's not. It's not. He's not the movie star that that's selling it. It's like they're not the stars. It's that Captain America was the right, star right, for right, right, not right, right, Chris right. Evans. It's that Thor was the star, not not Chris Hemsworth. It made them stars, but it's like, but it's it's not. They were not the person like the movie. It's essentially what we were just saying is what I he agree. was saying, but it made it the way he said that, it more aggressively. He and said then it more they took aggressively, it out of and they took it out of context. But I, I knew what he was trying to say, and it's the and it's basically what we just said. It's that. You could like what we just talked about Superman. Like if you could, you could put in the biggest star in the world in Superman. They're going to see it because they want to see what the next Superman movie is. Yeah. And so if you get some unknown who becomes a star because of Superman, he became a star because of Superman, and he might have done a great job, like the best Superman ever. You never know. But they're going to see the movie because of Superman. I agree with what he was saying. He just said it in a different the, way. The, the proof of it on the flip side of it yeah. is, even though you were the one that convinced me that Robin Pattinson was actually a very good actor. The number of people that were so anti Robert Pattinson playing because Batman, it's Twilight. but they yeah. went to go right. see Batman because it was Batman and he had yes. a crush. Yes, yes, that's that is your proof, right? And it's like, well, I don't know, I don't want to see it because of that guy. And I and I, I that conversation, remember that Kyle Live, and we're just like, dude, I'm telling you because you hadn't seen his other work, right? And so you just automatically thinking, well, that's I don't want to see. And the people Twilight. that had were excited, but they're not the masses. The, like you know, the people that that's see right. the indie that's work right. of Robert Pattinson that's aren't the hundred million right. dollars that it, needs to open. He those. had to win them over right. through his like he did with with Winston. He had to win him over with his performance. Um so anyway, there's so much this speaking again, once again on um on, on all this DC stuff because that's really what it, what it comes down to and this is I mean this is more so animated stuff but that well that that image is but DC Studios head honcho again. James Gunn reveals when the first DCU projects are going to be announced. DC Studios CEO CEO James Gunn and Peter Safran are believed to have pitched their eight to ten year DCU plan to Warner Brothers. But when will we finally get to see what it looks like? The filmmaker has an answer. James Gunn 
and Peter Safran only started working last month, but they've already faced more than their fair share of controversies. After a decade of inconsistency and poor planning on Warner Brothers' part, the DCU is in such capable hands that have been welcomed by most comic book fans. There are, however, many people unhappy with decisions, like putting Wonder Woman 3 on hold and ousting Henry Cavill from Superman. It is what it is, but you can understand why those frustrations exist. The Rock brought Cavill back as the Man of Steel and promised his sizable fan base that they were getting everything from Black Adam 2 to Hawkman. Now none of those projects are likely to see the light of day. How much of Gunn and Saffron's 8-10 to 10 year plan will we get to see is hard to say, especially when a single flop could panic Warner Brothers into changing course, which is essentially what we just said on this show. With that in mind, we're guessing the studio won't reveal the entire slate as they did back in 2014. Eight years later, we're still waiting on The Flash. Now, Gunn has taken to Twitter to confirm that we'll learn at least a few of the upcoming DCE projects next month. We, did you guys know this? Yeah, January. Uh, we heard rumblings that news might be coming in January, but at least now we know it won't be a full slate. Whether these projects are movies, TV, shows, video games, or a combination, all remains to be seen. Gun Superman movie has already been confirmed, of course, and we're hoping whatever is revealed offers some clarity about when the DCU, where it is going, and whether all those actors are really being replaced. There's also no word on if this news will drop on social or some, cor some sort of online presentation. All right, so... I only knew because I read this... To pull the story. <laughs> well, look, I mean, so that's that's the question. That I, I, I actually think the biggest part of this is the last part of it. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think it's going to come if it comes in January? Is, is it a James Gunn tweet? Or do they do something along the lines of what Feige does? A mini fandom. I think you we think get so? an actual presentation. I think this is way too big to be small. I think uh -huh. they need to make a statement. I think they need to carve out. This is an unprecedented announcement. They're ending a universe while it's still airing. They're launching a new thing that has to be quick. I think we get three movies minimum announced, and I think that we get the first one in December of 2024. I think those four movies roll out. They take the money they can. They recoup the budget. I'm seeing all of them because I want to support the artists that made those movies, but they also know they have to start this universe ASAP. I think they have a 10-year plan. They map out the year one to show they have a press. I don't think it's December 2024. I think it's summer 2024. No, it's too, it's too close, man. But not if, not if to the script get the movie is, out. Not if the script's almost done. Yeah, but the script. Okay, so if the script is almost done in 20, and it, you're already casting in January. Okay, what makes casting. This, you do you you're getting getting a movie out that fast? Eighteen months. But I, that's what I'm saying. If it was part of their pitch, we're like, we're pretty much done with this first script, and this is what we're going to do, and this is what we're thinking. Traditionally, in time like this, two years is hard i thought I, I understand that but i thought two years was including pre-production i'm saying they technically i think that was part of their pitch is they were already in this is what we're gonna do they've done a lot of that legwork tv traditionally can get things out in a year because they're constantly in post-production and putting things out sure, week sure, to week sure, sure. so like for example like you know um like if andor starts shooting today mm -hmm. if they wanted to get out they won't but if they wanted to get out of episode one by the end of 2023 mm -hmm. they could because all the other episodes are going to be consistently working and then every week because of television the schedule but with film you don't have that luxury like, that's essentially the first episode you I, know i i 100 percent get that i think the only thing that then pops into my mind i know you don't want to rush anything and you but but this is one of the biggest slates for Warner. Yeah. You are out of movies after the, after this after coming December. year. So what do you do? You're going to wait until December of 2024? I, I, th I, th I think you have to. But if, I think, it, I if think, it's rushed, then yeah, you... I, then exactly the whole right. universe no, but that's, yeah. but that's why I thought in my mind, because like you guys said, they've had this plan and they've this script had already been worked yeah, on. But a, that, script, but a script being done is different than, than saying, well, here's our director. We got to get... Because you right. got to negotiate with the director. Right. Then you got to... re. Then if it is Superman... Then you got to cast Superman. Then you got to cast Lois. Then you got to cast all these people. Then you got to get into production. Then you got to do locations. There's now if it's if they've already done all that. I that's think what, Superman is cast. You think so? I think Superman's cast. I think the director is attached. But I think they announced that in January. I still don't think that means the movie's out in summer. Just because maybe the previs is done and they no got leaks. The post production. No leaks on that. It just, I mean, it's been a month of James Gunn. Like, I, I think James Gunn came with Dude, Superman. I mean, Snyder would be all over that. I think, but I, but, 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 <laughs> I'm not even kidding. But, 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 I'm not even kidding. But I'll be honest with you. I would not be surprised if all of that was happening. And the way that they pulled that off, 
again, not to pull politics into it, is that the one thing Trump was really good at is smoke screens. Mm -hmm. You're paying attention to the nonsense on Twitter and right. you don't see what's actually happening. No, I, I would it. not be surprised if Gunn keeps engaging on Twitter if all of this back and forth cavil, all this stuff is because they're genuinely working and working. Oh, I very... think they're working. I no, think no, they're working. No, no, I know, yeah. but I mean, like, to the point where they could pull something by summer 2024. I, I think it is too dangerous to do it in summer. I think it's it is I, I, way too dangerous. I think that even, like, because remember, The Force Awakens was supposed to come out in May of 2015. Mm. Um, and they announced it in, like, 2013 or something, or maybe even later. Sure. Um, and they... And they said that we're going to get it out in May. And JJ's like, I don't have enough time to get this out in May. And I think moving it shows weakness. I love I love the idea that they're so far along that maybe all the post-production is, is in pre stage. So they've got the movie mapped already. Because yeah. I could see that happening. Yeah. I just worry that like with, I know right now uh, post-production houses are still inundated with work to the point where you can't hire some because it's sure. like they're already yeah. so far ahead. My issue would be the concern of visual effects not being done to the standard. Well, that's a good point. But yeah. I think that's December... Right. Yeah. I think December could be a possibility if you already have attached Superman and the director I, secretly. I think that's the thing that is actually throwing me off, and you're right. It's the visual effects. It's not the rest of the movie. I understand what you're saying, Christian. The rest of it I think would be fine. You're exactly right about the visual effects. I forgot about that. Like element. render. Render. That, well, that's all part of it. Yeah, that's all no, no, part no, no, of it. Yeah. No, 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 I know, but I'm saying for, like you said, with the, uh, any of these superhero films, any stuff like that, that is the thing that slows you down more than anything. Sure. And right yeah, now they're well, that's, And that's what I mean. It's all the. It's everything that goes into it, from the editing, from the Directed right. from reshoots, right. like that's the other thing is reshoots. There's yeah. always reshoots on on movies because the location wasn't available at the time that we needed it, but we really need that location, so we had to go back. So and so didn't look the way we needed them to right. look in that thing, so we need them to do that. We missed that that, that pickup right. shot, that right, wide right. shot. We need to get that. Also, All that Superman stuff, gets COVID, and the movie shut down for three months. That's what I mean. So and you don't if you put yourself and say we're ready, we're going to be out in May of. You are handcuffing yourself. So yeah. I, I mean, I honestly think December twenty twenty four is still super soon. Early. But I get it because of what Winston said. Yeah, if they have a year blank, they're you got to get something. Up. Plus, the deal will almost be done for those guys, and you got to get that movie mm -hmm. out. Now, what I think that they might do inside of that announcement is Superman comes here, another movie comes in like May of twenty twenty five, and then another movie comes in December of twenty twenty five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I for think, sure. I think. Christmas, summer, Christmas, Christmas. is mapped and yeah. announced. And then at Comic Con, they have people come out uh, for stuff. the Christmas, uh, right. for the following, and as well as they're announced. And don't January. forget about the TV aspect. We know that we also, uh, you, you know, I think Gunn's going to take a page out of Marvel with the DC stuff on, except. I think Marvel's putting out too much right now. I think that DC could do something where we were, we were getting the Penguin series, already you know that. We're also doing a television show that's going to connect to this and to, to connect mm -hmm. to that and HBO Max. So there's so much, and that's just guys. I mean, we we all had, January we had, we're yeah, talking about. No, we had so thing. much planned out. I, I do want. I have one more story I want to talk about before we do that. I want to tell you about our friends over um, at Boom Boom Studios once again presents this amazing segment that we've been working on here for a little bit, and really been introducing you guys to all of the new materials that Boom has. And man, we are so glad that they're not only sponsoring the episodes but introducing us to so many new things and a lot of familiar things um they had, they had the teenage mutant ninja turtles and the, and the power rangers and all that but they're back again this week and this is amazing so out this week from boom studios it's a very special double-sized issue of their firefly series that's right the firefly series it is called the big damn finale now, the issue is the epic culmination of Boom's all-new Firefly series. And we have to be very, very careful with this one because there is a huge, huge spoiler. So much so that Boom asked us not to share the main cover. So there's so much inside of this in general, Firefly, what's going on. It's really amazing. And I can say that the series, which continued the adventures of the crew past the TV series and the movie, it ends on a high note. But not every member of the team walks away from this one. So all new Firefly, Big Damn Finale is available now at your local comic shop. We're um we are really excited that we were able to have a chance to take a look at this. And then it's funny because I to be completely honest with you, I got into the, my first real Firefly adventure through this. Um everybody always raved about Firefly and talked about Firefly and Serenity and all that and 
and I finally had a chance to get into the lore and I did it like afterwards. I was a little lost at first because I didn't know some of the um some of the stuff, but then I started to kind of get into this adventure and it it was really amazing. And speaking of amazing, Book of Slaughter is the other one. Book of Slaughter. So Book of Slaughter for you guys, it is the first standalone one shot special set in the world of something is killing the children. Now, if you've been watching this show long enough, you know we've been talking about something is killing the children for a while and how much we love that. And we love the different genres that Boom plays in. As I just mentioned with Firefly and the science fiction element, this is more so in the um really more in the horror thriller type of area. And this issue expands the mythology of the series in some really interesting ways, diving into the white mass, which are the pack hunters of the house of slaughter. Now there's some more, I mean, there's so much, the, the artwork in this one, I'll tell you which one is my absolute favorite. Um, some of the stuff that they, this, I mean, I love, look at this, how cool this image is. It's amazing. Like the art on this one was, was great. And I'm really loving all of this, you know, I, as I mentioned to you guys many times over, the reason I've been so interested in Boom is because of the different genres and learning new things and the things that they've been able to do as they've been. I've noticed also from you guys when I'm learning more and more and more is that you guys have been checking this out, learning new, new titles, and you, you've all said the same thing. Well, look, I was a little uh, hesitant at first because they're a sponsor and I wasn't sure if maybe, you know, it's, it, it wasn't that good. Well, you, this is not false advertising. Yeah, everybody's coming back going, you were right. These are amazing. Something is killing the children was amazing. Well, guess what? Book of Slaughter is another one. And for fans who really want to dig into the lore of the series, the one shot also includes it's a, there's a guidebook at the end with never before seen info on the Order of St. George. So Book of Slaughter is also available now at your local comic shop. So once again, Book of Slaughter, look at all this stuff, man. It's really amazing. The artwork is, in, is absolutely incredible. So go ahead and pick that up. But we're so excited once again that Boom is sending this stuff exclusively to us, and we hope that you check it out. Go do it. Do it, do it, do it, do it. So thanks again to our friends over at Boom. You can check out all that. Um, as I mentioned, I'm so excited to have them on the show and have them be part of it. All right. Our last bit of news. Oh, Todd Phillips. Yeah, Todd Phillips at one point, by the way, was Winston said he was rumored to be the guy to they take over. And he turned it down. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm, I'm glad that he's turned it down. Uh, he, he's he wasn't the right guy for that job. He's I mean I'm not I, I love the Joker. I love that. But I he love made Joker. it as a counter superhero yeah. movie. He's yeah. not the guy to make the movie nah. if he's making the. How counter much movie. of a, I mean James Gunn and Saffron are like are like really fans of they this love stuff. This they stuff. love this stuff. It's also from the standpoint that Gunn feels like the type of, and Saffron feel like the type of people that would relish at the idea to run a studio. Right. Todd Phillips feels like the type of person, I'm going to do my one thing, then leave me the F alone. Leave me alone. Like, and that's why I think him and, and Joaquin work so good together. And that's why I think he they're was both, able to... They're both counterculture. They're both rebellious yeah, dudes. Yeah, I think that's why he also convinced, he was able to convince, because Joaquin didn't want to do sequels. Why do you think he didn't sign up for Doctor Strange? He was Doctor Strange. Yeah. He was locked in. And he's like, I don't want to do I don't want to do nine of these. I don't want to do all this. But thing. Joker 2 with Lady Gaga is all counterculture. Like, that's a yeah. bold swing. So it, 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 Todd Phillips, I like, I loved Joker. <laughs> I think Todd Phillips has, has... There was another movie he did with what was it with uh jonah hill and who was it war dogs uh miles teller and miles teller yeah good movie another counterculture the yes. thing, all of that's very right so you against don't, the grain you don't need that for for dc Project so. X he produced that's, that's, right. a, that's a movie that like ended party movies because it was so insane. that's that's right so last so this is this is the last one i want to talk about here with um diego luna uh just a little shameless plug here diego luna <laughs> breaks the silence on the fantastic four casting rumors this was the direct um, and Andor, Andor's Diego Luna has dressed publicly of joining the MCU and rumors he may be in contention to play Fantastic Four's Reed Richards. After being introduced to the Star Wars galaxy as Cassian Andor in 2016's Rogue One, Luna reprised his role in Andor. The prequel adventure proved to be an instant hit with critics and fans becoming regarded as some of the best content in the sci-fi franchise. Part of the acclaim stemmed from Luna's excellent performance, which even earned Star Wars its second ever Golden Globe. Scooper, we get some toast previously hinted that Luda might be in the actors in consideration to play Reed Richards. And while the actor is currently busy at Andor season two, while we'll be filming until August, he addressed some of the chances. So speaking to me, <laughs> uh, Andor, there it is. Yeah, Andor star uh, Diego Luna responded to questions, and he said that, that being part of the rumors is incredible. The number of claims that he's been entangled in. I just like I was talking about that this morning with the rumors. When you become part of the rumors, half of the rumors were real. You know, it's just incredible the amount of stuff that I see out there. The only thing I can tell you is that the next two years, I'm busy. In two years, we'll see if um, I even want to do film. Okay, so Kristen, 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 it's Christian. Right. Yes, take me to the airport. 
I hate you with all my heart. <laughs> <laughs> is it true? Is he playing? Is he playing Reed Richards? Um, do I think he's playing him? Uh, I, I don't know if that question has been answered yet. Do I think that he was being coy? No offense. Uh-huh. Um, and and and. Uh, <laughs> <God damn> <laughs> And I think it was being coy and and and, wait, me. <laughs> and, and hopped up on too much Loud coffee. Coffee yeah. Irish. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that I think he was being, um, you know, he was being elusive, and I think that he has definitely had meetings. Mm. Um, I think that, and it has nothing to do with race. It has nothing to do with anything else. I don't know if he's the, the right person for the role, to be honest with you, because mm. I and it, like no matter like they can cast whoever they whoever they want as far as nationality and 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 all that. Um, for for me. I think the character needs to be younger. Um, mm. Diego Luna is another one we were just talking about. Diego is 41 years old or whatever he might be. And I think he's a great actor and I love Diego Luna. I think he's phenomenal as Andor. I just think that I'd like to see them cast younger because Fantastic Four is one of those characters, uh, Reed Richards, all of them. They have not been done right yet. Tim's stories are just popcorn, you know, cotton candy. The other Black one. Adam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but but I think Black Adam has done uh, a little. I, I liked Black Adam better than those movies. But mm-hmm. but e- but either way, because the people are going, oh, you shouldn't be Latino. Stupid. Jessica Alba was 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 already cast as Sue Storm. So stop this. Um, it has nothing to do with it. I just don't know if he's necessarily the right person for for that role. Maybe a different role. But um, but I think that I'm curious where you guys stand. Where do you think that A Diego Luna fits into it, and B should the character be younger because they haven't been established yet. My only thing with that is that Reed, in most cases, is always kind of portrayed around Diego Luna's age. Oh, it's is not, he? It's, okay. not, it's not that he's not young, but the idea, even when they go up into space, he's kind of late 30s, early 40s. Okay. Like, about ready to marry Sue okay. pretty soon. Well, then that negates it's my Johnny, point. Johnny, that's the young one. Johnny, right. Johnny's in his 20s. Okay. Well, then that negates so, my point. Yeah. But I understand what you're saying because again, whoever you're putting into this, you're along for the ride five to ten that's, years. That's what I mean, and like, and so what? F- that's why his answer to me when he said like, I don't even know if I want to be around in film. To at that me, point. that sounds like a, a not happening. T- yeah. Two years is like you're you're going to be filming the next ten. So unless that's very consciously saying no to mislead us, that seems like a, that's not going to happen to me. Right? Because like the Fantastic Four is going to be a forever rollout. Like that's a long time. And if he doesn't want to necessarily be filming, which I understand, like it's great to be known for a character and then get to just take a couple years off and that sounds like what he kind of wants to do it also is one of those things that once you've got one mega franchise you don't necessarily want to do another and with andor being as successful as it is he might just be like no no no, i've got my thing i'm good so i think this i don't think he's going to be cast as reed richards but i do think he's going to be cast in a marvel film um i think there's more roles down the road for him to play i think they really i mean and just speaking to the guy he's just so chill and yeah. he's so laid back and from everything i've heard he's just a he's a treasure to work with he's a really brilliant actor so he's I, interesting he's, i love him as cassian andor because really i keep like being like i want to get him i like that he's a puzzle but that's what i said to him in the interview i said i said look i love rogue one but the main reason i was intrigued by cassian andor at all in that movie wasn't necessarily because the characters was of him yeah I'm interested in the character now, also because of him. But the character is so developed now in the show. But like, I'd like to see him, and and he also he's directed a handful of things. Um, and I asked him that if he wanted to direct Andor, and he was uh, episodes of it, and he was just like, you know, I it, it's too hard for me to try to do both things, sure. and I don't. It's not not something I want. Everybody wanted can to. do it. No, he just he just doesn't he doesn't think that it you're able to commit the same way. Um, Again, yeah. totally depends. depends. Ben Affleck is an example where I think you can. It just that some people, he could be. It, it could be that he would be a wonderful director if he wasn't acting. Yeah, that's what, and I think that's what he was insinuating. And I think that like, but it looks like he's his passion might be there, right? And yeah. also the commitment of what he wants to do. I don't know, but uh, I I don't think that he's going to be um, cast as Reed Richards. And I also think um, where whoever they go with, that's another one. Don't you think that that one? They would already have locked in. Oh yeah, I, right. That, that's sure cast. I guarantee it. I think the movie's already in. In in like they're they're maybe not filming, but that movie's already in whatever production that it could be in at this right. point. Not not with a game plan like this and everything that's moving forward. If you're already ready to drop, you know what will be Secret Wars yeah. and Kang Invasion and all that stuff. That stuff is far into its its trenches, which could be with him saying, "I'm so busy for the next two years." We got to see. I still don't. 
I agree with you. I don't necessarily think that that's him affirming it, but it could be, yeah, yeah I'm busy with Andor, but I'm just not going to say that I'm also shooting Fantastic right, Four. You right, know? Well, and then the last thing before we jump here, too, that I wanted to talk to you guys about, speaking of um, uh, Fantastic Four, the rumors, and I don't agree with these rumors, but that, th that Fantastic Four could show up in Ant-Man Quantumania. It's possible. Right? Okay. I, I, think, I think a potential of them being mentioned, like the way Doctor Strange was mentioned in, in Phase 2 or whatever it was, mm. I think that's possible. Um, but I think that the, the, the reason I bring that up, Peyton Reed was had a conversation and an interview where he said that he wants to make, he wanted to make sure that this movie was an Avengers level film. Mm -hmm. He said like the last, the last two have been like kind of palate cleansers, which he was cool with. But this time he, you know, uh, the not literally kicked in the Kevin Feige door to say, Hey, we want to really make an impact on this one from everything that we're hearing about it, the way that the trailers looked on whether it's D 23 comic con, um, even the, the teasers that they put out, I feel like he uh, is going to accomplish that, but Winston, what, what, do you, what do you think? I mean, I think there's plenty of room for you to, if you want to do that, you maybe don't put it in the film directly, but you got mid credit and post credits. If that's how you want to fantastic Four. Mm -hmm. but what do you think about his comments as far as like this being an Avenger level Great. movie? Yeah. It's, it's, I think it should be. I yeah. think that you, you already had a situation where with Ant-Man and the Wasp. Just watch that last night, by the way. That would you think again? Uh, same same feeling as it last time. It, it, it's 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 one of the weaker MCU films. Mm. It's it's got there's some great stuff going on in it, but there's some really cheap, like they they the thing that I hate the most about like whether it's Thor, Love and Thunder, or some of the Guardians, they go for the joke sometimes too much uh, and say sacrifice the, the plot. Like I think Luis is great, Michael yeah. Payne is great, yeah. but a lot of the time, like none of the like at at one point. It, him and Ti and David Dustman, they didn't even feel like real characters. They just I like comedy you. characters. I think I think what what makes it more of a problem for me, and like even though I've since come around a little bit with Love and Thunder, is at least you had Boar to balance something. You I always loved Love and Thunder. I, I've come back. You come back to loving it. No. Oh, I've, oh. I've, I've stepped off a little bit. Oh, have the you? The oh, fact I that, that I still oh, haven't rewatched okay. it, I can't. I, every okay. time I think to sit down, you gave and me, it, you like, gave me some sh for that. I did. At the end. Okay. No, no, but but okay. it, it took it took it time. me a bit too. It, okay. it took time. But all I was gonna say is, um, Ghost was just yeah throwaway, and that's what makes that movie suck for me. Is it, that like you you I have no reason to care about the villain. To, and you know and you know what she does a lot, and it's not her fault. It's the way she was directed, I think, by Peyton Reed. She does the typical villain chase face that I can't stand. Like I, when you get when you get knocked down and you and you do this, I'm coming right yeah. after something <laughs> every time. Like, chase face. It's a chase face, and it, and like they do they do the chase face all the time, and I can't. And it's like she does it like six different times. Yeah. The main well, reason I think Fantastic Four could pop up mm. is Peyton Reed's favorite team favorite heroes in the world are Fantastic yes. Four. Like that's Sam yeah. Raimi's Spider-Man. Like yeah. he loves the Fantastic Four. It's, I can see part yeah. of the conversation of him doing this movie to the scale was I want them to be introduced. And yeah. there is a world where they're trapped in the quantum realm and they're stuck there from the 60s and then they can do a fish out of it's water true. story. And, it, and it's just that. It's that Kang, Kang has two main opponents and it's typically not Ant-Man. It's the Avengers and it's the Fantastic Four. I can and see so, it really working. Especially because there's also this idea is Kang an ancestor slash descendant of Reed Richards or Dr. Doom or what? There's so this like constant back and forth. So it's a lot. All right. Look, we had a major, major episode here too. There's a lot of stuff. Look, the DC stuff is going to have a, give us stuff to talk about for a bit. Now I know this is not comic book related, but look at that. <laughs> That's right. Power on. Power on. I ain't never heard no lightsaber say power on. Yeah, this one did. Ooh, it changes colors. Yeah, I'm gonna give you a little. I'm gonna give you a little breakdown on this one in a second. I'll go a little. I'm gonna put a little piece into the video, but I'm, I'm trying to get it to the red, and that's I turned it into the red saber. This thing I show. There it goes. Go. I just don't uh, know if it's showing up on camera. Yeah, that's that's. It's not showing no, up on camera. It's just showing white. It's okay. But um, it, shut up. So, <laughs> this thing I uh, I'm gonna tell you guys all about it in just a second where I got it from. But um, I I lit it up. My my I show my little five year old. I go, Maisie, don't go inside. Look at this. And I lit it up in the back. I show. <laughs> <laughs> and then she gave me chase face yeah. uh, but let me tell you a little bit about the about where i got it from damien saber that's right they reached out and they said hey man we know you're a you know you're a star wars guy and man how would you feel about getting one of our lightsabers i said i don't know man i've been offered these lightsabers in the past you know what's what's different and they said well, let us show you what do you like 
And I said, I don't know. I'm looking around the site. You know what I saw? There's some there's some great ones. There's, there's there's some good ones here. There's that Luke Saber Force. There's the Heavy Dueling Yoda one. There's the Mar- the Mall one. They got a lot of great ones. But the one I just showed you, the one else that stood out, Darth Revan, dueling lightsaber, infinite color changing with 12 sound font sensitive S smooth swing. And I'll tell you what I did. I took this thing and I was in my backyard. It was nighttime. And I was just whipping it around in the backyard. And I felt like I was 15 years old again. The sounds that it makes. I've been wanting, I've been telling you guys forever when I was going to Star Wars Celebration, I could not find a good Sith saber that I wanted to get and that I wanted to put on my shelf and that I could finally purchase. I've been looking for one for five years and I finally found it because the good people over at Damien Saber. Check it out. The link's in the description. This is a really great thing. I'm gonna, you're going to be seeing it a lot in the, uh, in the videos. So love these guys. Very happy for them to uh, the, the, the business that they have, but I'm very happy to, to tell you guys about it. Damien Saber. Check it out. So once again, the link is in the description for that. And thank you guys so much, so much for joining us here today for Winston A. Marshall, Koi John Drew. Thank you guys. We'll be back next week. It's going to be a shorter episode, but we're going to go over our best TV and movies from the comic book genre where we're just going to have a just round robin conversation. So join us. Thank you. We appreciate you. And we'll see you on the flip side, everybody. Merry Christmas, fool. That's right. Merry Christmas, everybody. So thank you. See you later. Bye.